Hi everyone, uh, this is our first sort of broadcast reaching out to all the students. Uh, it's been three weeks now since we've had classes and I hope you're all keeping safe. Uh, I've been really enjoying these video clips and this is new for me as well, learning how to teach online. Uh, so usually we doing it in classes and it's always been in my mind to develop a, an online program and we're working on that at the moment and a program where we can teach uh, people all over Ireland and Europe on our online program but more of that later on as the weeks develop. So, so far I have given out six lessons and you've been doing really really well. So one of the things I just want to talk to you about is how to train uh, online. There is sometimes this ability to suddenly look at all the tapes and then just repeat what you've just seen but the purpose of the training is for you to learn on your own. And in CLAT, there are two main ways for this to be done. The first way is through jurus. Jurus is the upper body movements. And this is really about learning how to develop technique and learning how to do them properly and learning to get the breathing with them. So start off learning them slow and then you can add in speed and strength later on. But try not just to do it once or twice and then video film yourself doing it because that's not really the purpose. So even if it takes you longer than one week, two weeks, three weeks to learn one jury, just spend the time on learning that jury. And, and then once you've learned it, the next stage really is, is the understanding of the movement. This is sometimes known as level two, understanding the movement of the jury. And this is where we learn how the body moves with that jury. And once we practice it and learn it, the third stage is what we call mastering. And mastering the jury, you, you need to do it at least like a thousand times. That might sound a lot. But the great thing about the Pupla Chimandi jury is that there are 18 of them, but nine of them follow jury number one and nine of them follow jury number two. So even if you practice the first six jurors 20 times, that's 180 times. So if you practice that four, five, six times doing that amount of jurors, you start building up your reputation and you start looking good. After you get that understanding and you're mastering the techniques, the next stage is really functionalizing it. And we will be working on that later on in this online program. Functionalizing means learning how to make the technique work on the street. Where do you get all the self-defense techniques? Where does it come from you, from inside your own body? And bring that actually out. And then the fifth stage is maintaining it. It's keeping it inside your system the whole time. So if you learn a new jury, you learn a new technique, you still retain the knowledge from your past training. And this is what makes the difference between um, an ordinary student and a good student and a really, really advanced student. So it's really, really important that you practice, practice, practice. How often do you need to practice? If you practice 10 minutes a day, four or five times a week, that is better than practicing one hour once a week. So just spend a few minutes just practicing your gurus, even just getting your body turning with the, with the movements to, till it becomes part of you. The second stage of solo training is what we call uh, Lanka. Lanka is the lower body. So this is like the footwork drills. And we have really done some of these in class, like walk the line, the female triangle, which is sometimes known as Lanka Tiga. And on lesson 60, you're discovered you know, Lanka Umpat, the four directions. And again, practice footwork. You can practice footwork with the jurus or just practice Lanka on its own. But it's also good for your leg strength and being able to move. Um, a tiger can't hit what they can't find. So if you're if you're not able to move or get out of the way of a punch or a strike coming towards you, it is um, it's not good for you. So really, really practice it. The third stage of, of these training on your own is what we call the breathing and meditation exercises. These are known in Pukla Chamandi as the Tanaga Dalam exercises. And I already have given you one for breathing out from here, moving in and then doing the solo training. But inside the juries as well, they are breathing exercises. Now you can go for like one, two, hit, three, hit, breathe, hit, bring back, come across, five, hit. So again, practice and breathing. Now if you put all this together, you're going to have breathing with jurus and with lankas. Okay, and if you train at home, you know, we are going to meet up again. This is all going to end at some stage, hopefully sooner rather than later. And if you practice these techniques, then when we get together, you will have the movements and we can move on. Okay, now I want to talk to some of the students who maybe haven't started the program yet, um, are coming online. Look, due to time commitments, I can really only manage to mark about two lessons a week. 
Um, so if you come onto the program late, you can practice the, the techniques in any order you wish, but you can only send me the lessons and start from lesson one. So don't send me in lesson four without sending me in lessons one, two, three, and four before it. And just send me in two, sorry, send me in two lessons a week. Okay, because I have about 130 students and if I get four or five lessons sent to me for a whole lot of students, I won't get around to marking them. And I really want to see your progression over the training. So just take your time, practice the movements. And I said, like, if you have any questions at all, you can, you can ask me, um, send me an email. I'm going to put some material on there to our website, some background information to the jurors and to the Lancas uh, and to the Cali stick drills as well. And again, even on the Cali stick drills, um, some of them are very, very good, but I, I can tell when a student has just practiced it a couple of times and just throws it onto the tape. Try to look at the movements and get the movements, okay? Just don't do it for five minutes and then decide you're going to video film yourself and then send that to me. Just practice it for like, you know, 10 minutes again, two or three times a week. And if you haven't got a stick, you can use a brush shaft, you can use a, like a, a wooden spoon, whatever you're going to actually use. And, and don't worry about, you know, don't get so concerned that I'm going to make, you know, laugh or look at the tapes. 99% of all the tapes that come to me have been actually quite good and I can see you learning it and I can see you practicing it um, and it's, this is new for me as well so I'm learning to teach online and learning to talk to you guys online uh, I'm missing you loads um, I can't wait to get back to class again so listen just practice over the next few weeks again if you have any problems just email me if I don't get straight back to you I will get back to you at some stage you know so, so please allow me you know, like maybe it could take a day or two for me to get back to you, but I will get back to every single person that emails me or sends me their video lessons. Okay, so here we go. End of the first um, sort of podcast online cast. And I hope you enjoy it. I think there's a problem with our brightness on this, but I am going to be learning this skill. Um, so practice your jurus, practice your lanka, practice your Tanaga Dalam breathing exercises. And... Look forward to seeing you on the next lesson. Take care. Goodbye.